Welcome back, everyone. This is the Old Man in the War returning to you with the Apollo Bar Weave. The uh, first part of the video, I wanted to just do a pause. However, my uh, Snagit software and whatever else, I'm just going to blame uh, Gremlins and the upstate New York weather for this. So I um, will post the original video, including the second one. I have moved my camera, my webcam. It is on an arm and it is shaky. I'm going to try to reduce that shake so it doesn't make everybody... Um, uncomfortable. So I will try to work through this in terms of uh, bits and pieces to make this as simple as possible. <laughs> Again, for the, I think, third or fourth time, I have not made many videos on things like this. So I do appreciate everybody's patience and care uh, concerning me making this video. I say concerning, geez, I'm just not using the right words here. <laughs> Anyways, so to get the actual Apollo weave started, once we have all the major pieces in place, what we're going to do is we're going to take the center core weave. We're going to go from the left outside, lay it on top. And we're going to take the right side and we're going to bring it underneath. So we've got these two parts right here. With this, we are going to take our top cord, the, the main top cord that we have weaved through. And we're going to go underneath to the right. With this being on the right hand side, we're going to go up and over and we're going to go through and shoot it right over to the side. So we have this bite loop going right over, which looks exactly like that. We're going to do the same exact thing on the left hand side. So we're going to go underneath. Oh, well, cord permitting. We're going to go underneath and we're going to go up and through. And then out to the side. And again, I apologize for my arm being in the way. Just trying to keep this simple. Let me see if I can adjust my light a little bit so it doesn't seem like you guys are uh, suffering from color blindness here, which I do. All right, that might be a little bit better for lighting. So again, I apologize if it's not that great. So we have our core center. We have our top, which is going to be part of the Apollo bar. <laughs> And now we have our center, which is going to be the first strand. As you can see, the center creates the baseline. We have the top, which is interlocking or creating the bar loop. And now for the crossover, we're going to take this. We're going to go dead center between the two main cords like that. So we're going to go right down under. We're going to go slightly over to the right and we're going to go up between the cords here. I do apologize if uh, I apologize for the shake. I'll get this figured out at some point someday. We come up through the top, underneath, middle and over just like that. So mindfulness over, under, through to the side, but not past this. So we've got loop one and loop two. And we're going to leave that right over to the side. We're going to do the same exact thing over here. We're going to go right down through the middle. We're going to go underneath that main stranding core and straight up as such. And we're going to bring it over there. And I got to tell you, this ring light is about to get thrown out in the, the F word yard. So just apologize with this. Now we've got our strands. We've got our core and we've got our loop or our hook. We want to tighten and make this as neat as possible. This is one of these weaves that you do not want to over tighten by any means. You want to keep the integrity of your core as best as you can, along with having the knot look good. So as I tighten and bring this in, depending on your, and again, the camera's shaking. I apologize. I'll try to keep my hands off my desk a little bit. Depending on your comfort, the center cords are always going to go straight out. That's going to pull this together. The under out loop, you want to try to have some of an upward angle to create the tightness. So you want to try to go upwards as best as you can. And then the cross in strand, you want to start with an angle but then you want to try to go sideways with it once you finally get the shape where you want it to be. So now ultimately at the end of the day, 
we are hoping for it to look like this. So we've got the crisscross, we've got the loop hook out, and then we've got the over bar. Weave number one, perfect. Now, this process will repeat the whole way down, but we are going to intertwine these colors in a flip flop pattern. So round two, we take the left, lay it over the top. We take the right and we go right underneath. There's the, there's the pattern there. Now, oh shoot, I'm sorry, I hit the camera. I'm just very nervous. Forgive me, YouTube and anybody else watching it. Now, because we had this crisscross over the top, guess what we're gonna do? We're going to go right underneath. So because this green comes out to the side, this funky is going to go around under through the hoop and through like that. Same thing on this side. We're going to go down over and through and shoot it out to the side. So it looks exactly like the previous loop, but now we've got the funky green in place of the regular bright neon green. Now that we have that, we're going to take our green strands. We're going to come right over the top of it and we're going to go right dead center down the middle like we did before. And then we're going to come up through that hoop on the side and shoot it over to the side. So make sure you've gone between both cords, you've gone underneath and you've shot it out over to the side. Same thing on the left. Bring yourself down, go underneath and through and up and bring it out over to the side. So it's going to look basically exactly the same, just with the cords reversed, which is fine. As you tighten it, I would suggest you start with the center cord to a degree, and then just kind of do soft pulls a little bit at a time until you feel you're in a good spot. The, the main crisscross cord, I wouldn't tighten too much till towards the end, and I'll explain why in just a second. Once we get the center as best as we can, and as I said, the loops underneath, we wanna to try to pull to an upwards angle. And you might see it a little better on the left-hand side because my fingers aren't in the way. We wanna to try to pull those up and give them a good firm pull, but not too tight. And we wanna pull the sides in. Once we know that looks pretty good, and forgive me, my finger is gonna cover this, but I wanna bring this outwards and tighten it a little bit. So I'm gonna take my one finger and I'm gonna put it just underneath where this loop knot is and I'm gonna give it a pull. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side and give it a pull. With that, I'm gonna explain why I've done that from a night not, huh, not tightening perspective. So my main reasons for doing this, and as you can see, my thumbs are pressing down, is for this. As we do each weave, working our way down, we want to keep the integrity of the strands. We want to keep the integrity of the knot. We don't want to not tighten enough and we don't want to over tighten. We don't want to wibble wobble of everything. So just from these two knots alone or this first set, as you would look at it, when you bring it up and look at it a little closer, you can see where the knots sit. Because we have the funky green going under, we now have the neon just under the crook of where that apex of the knot is and it comes across. We want to keep that pattern going down. Yes, there is a little bit of space in the middle and that will follow all the way down. And that's exactly what we're going to have. So now that we have our first set, we're going to do the same exact thing. And as I am recording this video, and as I've seen with a lot of other um, creators on YouTube, they uh, kind of do a fast motion or whatever. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to keep on recording. I'm going to do another weave for the next set, and then I'll go ahead and skip ahead. So now that set one is done, we're starting to work on set two. Set two is exactly the same way. We keep that, that center core the way it's supposed to be. But now that we've gone through these motions once, what happened? Neon green was on top before. What's neon green going to do now? Neon green is going to be the supporting anchor underneath. So that's going to come down and under as it did before. And it's going to go up through into the side, just as such like that and shoot over. 
Same thing on the other side. We're going to go down, under, through, and across. Oh, yeah. And sometimes your cord gets caught up. So there we go. So we've got our little knot sets here. So they're secured. We have the anchor points. Everything looks good. So what do we do now, boys and girls? Well, we're going to take our funky green because that's going to be the next set. We're going to come right over the top. Boom. Drop it down. Go dead center between the middle and underneath. And we're going to go through that hoop to the right and shoot it over to the side, which is exactly where we want it to be. Same thing on the left. We're going to drop that guy over here. And we're going to get it underneath. And we're going to bring it down, under, and through over to the side. Once we shoot that over, there we go. We can see how our knot is looking. And from where I was talking about the crook, you're going to see this in just a moment. So I'm going to bring the, the center cords in a little tighter. And then our neons, I'm going to try to tighten in. Notice it looks a little sloppier because I had a little more slack in there. This will happen. Again, my fingers are kind of in the way, but when you tighten up your knots, you can always kind of pinch or hold a cord as you're working on it to get it where you need it to be. And again, as, as I said just a few moments ago, keep yourself honest and look at the status of your knots. Look to see where they are. So I'm kind of pulling a little bit here and there at a time, which is fine. That's kind of what you really want to do anyways. But what I want to do here, and I'm actually pulling a little tighter on purpose, is I want to make sure I don't malform this knot. So with the funky green being the middle cord or the top cord now, I want to make sure when I finally have the tightness that I want it to be, I kind of pull it straight out to the side a little bit more. Plus, I want to make sure it's under the other knot so it stays semi-uniform as it goes down the entire way. And it looks pretty much that way to me right now, which is good. So I've got the neon green, which I'm trying to do in an upward knot. I did kind of pull it to the side. So I'm just kind of straight and, and honest up that knot for myself. Everything looks good. And you may see, you're going to see a gap, a little house gap. It looks like a house. Totally fine. You could push it upwards a little bit to tighten up your weave as you go down. But you can also just kind of leave it organic. So if your knots are staying consistent the whole way up and down, doesn't matter. It's all going to work out for you at the end. So now that we have this, I'm going to do the second part of the second weave. And then I will work towards the, uh, the finishing end of the video here. So we have started weave one, round two. I've kind of gotten it to where I wanted it here. I could pull it a little tighter here, I guess. Yeah. Again, the other thing is always lift your project up with a weave. Look at it with your eyes. Make sure it looks uniform. Take your fingers, push and press and flatten or shape the way it should look. Do this as you feel comfortable to get it where you need it to be. That's, that's the important thing of what you do here with these weaves. So again, for the second knot for weave two, I've got my top down, as you can see. Um, I obviously had the neon as the baseline. The neon's gonna be the next top weave. So with this guy shooting out to the side, we're gonna do what? We're gonna come right underneath. We're gonna go over and we're gonna go through and shoot it out to the side. Same thing on the other side. We're gonna go down, under, through and shoot it over to the side just like that and you can see how this pulls and you can definitely tighten it up a little bit before you add that center weave just don't do it too much so your fingers aren't pinched per se with that we're going to take our neon strands we're going to bring right strand over dead center middle right down to the bottom and then we're going to bring it up and shoot it through one other piece of advice I would like to throw towards everybody is when you're doing weave, if you're doing things in a certain um, uh, pattern, stay with that pattern. As you can see, um, well, if you couldn't already tell, I favor my right hand. So I try to work from a right hand perspective, work my way to the left. If you're left handed, right handed, whatever it means, just follow that pattern. If you kind of crisscross or change it up, 
if you're not familiar with your weave, you may get lost somewhere in the middle of the weave and you may make a bad knot or, or change it up. That's nobody's fault. It, it's just how things go. And as you gain comfort with your weaves and with your art, I would say just be consistent with that particular part. So again, now I'm tightening up my weaves. There's the funky green, which I'm trying to pull up from a rounded top perspective. Bring the center cords in a little tighter. And now you can see the center part there is a little bit off. So again, you, my finger is unfortunately in the way, but I'm just doing a pinch to angle pull the weave out. And I'll try to ignore doing it on the left-hand side so you can see it. Just trying to have it be consistent. But once I get it to kind of where I want it to be, pretty much. Again, we want things to be uniform. So you want to always keep your eyes on it. You could do this knot in your sleep if you wanted to, totally fine. But if it gets all janky or tightened or loosened, it does nobody any good. So status check. I'm going to look at my two sets of weaves now. One, two, three, four. Pretty uniform. Knots look good. As I said, the little house shape is now consistent. Well, the top one's going to be different because that's where your starting weave is. The house shape is consistent. I can take my fingers and push this up tighter if I want to, or I can leave it as B and give it more of a spacious footprint, which is what I'm going to do with this. So now we have two full sets of weaves that we've gone through, and you're going to keep that alternating pattern the whole way down. I'm going to pause this and come right back once we're uh, down to the finish. Okay, everybody, back. Once we finally get to the end and we're ready to do the uh, the final weave here, you can see how tight things are. I do have a, a brass fid that I'm able to sneak through the cords here. So I'm actually going to go ahead and work my way through and come up through the knot so I can get a nice, clean finishing tie to these guys here. So I'm going to do the one to the right like we have been doing and the same on the other side. So we're going to go up and over through these knots here. And again, we're just going to try to keep this as clean as possible here. Come up through into the side. There we go. All right. And then we'll do our final tie in the knot and I'll be right back. All right, everybody, I am back. We're going to finish up this Apollo weave bracelet. So now that we're down to the final end here, we're going to undo our Titan on the jig. I'm going to get the jig out of the way here and I'm going to remove the other buckle ends to make sure everything is good here. Get that out of the way. And again, to make sure that you've done everything right, your buckle should come in and connect the way that it should. So this is looking really, really nice. We just have to put the fine, uh, finishing touch on it. The way these strands are, you could definitely just go ahead and cut them and burn them and you're fine. Um, what I'm going to recommend we do is with the bottom weave having the, uh, the funky green, I'm going to take the green and go over the top of it. And we're going to flip this right over and bring it on the other side reason I'm saying that is I want to try to tighten and bring the weave in a little bit. So again, if you do have a fid, I would highly recommend doing this. Put your fid on the end of one of the cords. And from the right hand side, we want to try to lock those guys in as best we can and go underneath the bottom part of the one weave. We're going to loosen it up, but that's okay because we're going to tighten it right back up once we go through. So I have brought this through and I'm bringing it over and you can see this little simple knot that I made. No big deal. And the other two knots are there so we can cut and get a nice clean burn. I'm going to undo my weave and now the same thing on the other side. I'm going to bring my green underneath and over. I'm going to put my fid on the end of it and I'm just going to go right underneath that little bottom weave point. So then from the cuts and the way we do the burns, is going to make a lot of sense for what we're looking to do. So I no longer need the fid. I'm going to get that out of the way. And again, I do apologize for the shakes on the camera with these two. I'm going to pull these two up to tighten the sides. Okay. It's going to malform the sides a little bit, but 
I'm going to bring those out and in a little bit. The only thing we have right now is this funky green stands up a little bit. So I'm going to pull and push that down a little bit to tighten these sides up. And then I'm going to pull the green up. So everything is about as tight as it can be from a good standpoint because we don't want to have lumps or anything seem wavy. Not a big deal. Now, finishing touch. We cut the sides of the weave on one side and the other. We want to go just above where it sits flat because when we melt it, we want it to shorten up just a little bit. And we're going to do this on the other side right here. Basically the same thing. Create just a little bit of space so we can melt that down. And then the same thing from the underneath. Now that we have the underneath, we want to cut close but not too, too close. So I'm going to do one at a time. Got this one with a little bit of space and this one, I'm going to angle it with a little bit of space. Reason for it is when we get our torch under it, it's going to melt down a little bit and it will sit flush based on the way we do it. First things first, I want to take care of these two middle ones. I'm going to take my torch, I'm going to turn it on and I'm going to lightly melt them. No big deal. There we go. A little bit of a melt. I apologize for the blur, but I'm going to take my channel lock pliers and I'm just going to run it over to the top. So before it cools down too much, I'm basically just taking the little melt and flattening it down. So that locks it down and brings those two together, which is exactly what I want. We're going to do basically the same thing on the sides because you can see, and I apologize for the blur, these stand up a little bit. Not a big deal. And the other side, I actually cut a little closer. And that one I'm a little more worried about because I want to make sure it doesn't come through. So I'm actually going to pull this end up a little bit more. So I'm going to melt this end first. And I'm going to do a little bit more of an actual melt melt. So it just kind of blends in and leans against the other cords. There we go. A little bit of a hotter melt. And I'm just going to take my channel lock. And I'm going to lean it against it. There we go. Yep, that's not going to go anywhere right there. So that's a good, nice melt. Very close. I should have cut it a little longer. It's okay. N not the end of the world. I'm not selling this bracelet. This one is for me, so I'm, I'm fine with what goes on. Now, as you can see, i got to melt these two guys down. So I'm going to take the torch on the further end, and I'm going to lightly melt it a little bit longer because there's a bit more cord. And you can see that the cord bubbles a little bit. I'm going to wait a few seconds, and then I'm going to run the pliers over. If you wait a few more seconds, you can also do this with your fingers and get a good feel for it. Now, because I did that, my finger, as it runs over, I feel a little sharp edge just because of how it went. I'm going to take this and run it over really quick, soften it, and because I've been doing this so long, I have what I call asbestos finger. I'm just going to take my my thumb and my regular finger and just kind of form press it. And that's it. I've got my two cuts and then my center cut. Everything is nice and clean. So here is the Apollo bar. Just over nine and a half inches for a wrist size with the material lengths that I had talked about. As you can see from top down, it looks really, really nice. It sits really well with a three quarter inch buckle. I'm going to put this on real quick so you can see. And it is pretty awesome. So, again, I want to thank everybody who has watched this video. Um, again, as I've said, probably now for the seventh time. Um, if you have any questions or anything, please leave a comment below. I'll be more than happy to answer it. Uh, I'm going to definitely do more videos like this. I'm going to get better at it and uh, hone my craft. So thank you very much for your support, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.